We want to use Descartes' rule of signs in order to determine the number of positive roots and negative roots that this polynomial may have. Now the way that we're going to use is taking a look at the number of sign changes that occur. If you think about factorization, if we're multiplying two objects, multiply two positive numbers, the answer stays positive. There's no sign change there. But if we multiply something positive to something negative, we will have sign change. And those are the sign changes that we're looking for. So for our positive roots, first thing I want to take a look at is how many sign changes are occurring. Now we're talking about sign changes from the coefficients. This is a negative 10. The next coefficient is a negative 17. No sign change. From the negative 17, the next coefficient is a positive 7. So we found one sign change already. From 7 to 2, there was no sign change. And keep in mind, we're taking advantage of, let's call it the first half of Descartes' rule. It says we can find the number of positive sign changes by taking a look at the number of sign changes. There is a proviso. It could be less than the number of sign changes by even integers, but you know we didn't have any even integers leading to another even integer. So I want to say right now that we could have one positive root. I'll know for sure when we take a look at the negative roots. What we're going to do is we're going to use f of negative x. Basically we're reflecting it. If you imagine some cubic polynomial, if it had one positive root, then if we take a look at f of negative x, I'm really just spinning that sucker around. I could use the same test to figure out how many negative roots it may have. Let's take a look at f of negative x. Here, we're only really interested in the odd exponents. You see, x to the third, if I replace it with negative x to the third, will yield something negative. So our coefficient would change from a negative 10 to positive 10x to the third. x squared is exactly the same as negative x quantity squared, because negative x times negative x would still give me a positive x squared. So the 17 even integer on the exponent will not change signs. x to the first power will change sign. It will give me a negative 7x. The constant term 2 will not change sign, so it will stay positive 2. Now let's take a look at the number of sign changes that occurred here. From 10 to negative 17, we have one change. From negative 17 to negative 7, no sign change at all. From negative 7 to positive 2, we have another sign change. So I'm feeling confident saying we have two negative roots, which makes me feel pretty good because one positive root and two negative roots would yield three roots total, which makes sense for a cubic. It could have as many as three. So we can take a look at a second function. Our g of x is 2x to the third plus 7x squared plus 2x minus 3. Again, I'm interested in those sign changes. So for positive roots, let's take a look for some sign changes. 2 to 7, no change. 7 to 2, no change. From 2 to negative 3, I do have one change. So I have a sneaking suspicion we have one positive root. Now notice there were no sign changes on my even integers, but the fact is I only had two even integers, so if it's less than two, hello, it would probably still be one positive root. For our negative roots, we're just going to take a look at g of negative x. 
And again, the only players that will actually change are the ones that have odd exponents. So 2x to the third, odd exponent, if I evaluated it at negative x, would give me a negative 2x to the third. The 7x squared would remain. Sign, this squaring function takes care of the sign change. That plus 2x sign would change. I would have a minus 2x. The negative 3 is constant. He will always stay negative 3. So now let's take a look at our sign changes from negative 2 to 7. We have one sign change. From 7 to negative 2, how convenient is that? Another sign change. From negative 2 to negative 3, I have none, but this just tells me that we have two negative roots, or certainly less than 3. And again, one positive root, two negative roots, makes me feel pretty good that this looks alright for a cubic function. Alright.